Hi, everyone, and welcome to question two associated with the types of biases lecture. As usual, I recommend you pause the video, attempt the question on your own, and then watch the remainder of the video to see whether you did it correctly. So in this case, a randomized clinical trial is, per is performed and finds that drug X reduces the risk of colon cancer in the per protocol analysis. However, a secondary analysis finds that approximately 25% of patients who received drug X had severe nausea and diarrhea with higher rates of dropout among the patients receiving drug X compared to placebo. And we're asked, which specific type of bias are you concerned about? So we remember that the three main types of bias to always consider when evaluating a study result is selection bias, measurement bias, and confounding. And in this case, where they're talking about unequal loss to follow-up, I would be most concerned about a potential selection bias. Remembering that selection bias can both occur on the front end of a study when it comes to actually recruiting study participants and on the back end when it comes to following up with, with study participants and loss to follow-up. And in this case where there may be unequal loss to follow-up, I would specifically be concerned about attrition bias, which again, as we discussed in the lecture, attrition bias occurs when there are losses to follow-up and the individuals who are lost to follow-up do not represent the underlying study sample, leading to the study sample being skewed in a certain direction. So for example, in this case where there's, you know, 25% of patients having severe nausea and diarrhea, patients who may be more likely to be lost follow-up um, could include people who have less reserve to deal with these um, side effects. So maybe patients who are older age, patients with increased uh, comorbidities, or even just patients with lower health literacy. You know, these may be populations who, in the face of adverse events, may be more likely to drop out because they don't understand what's going on or they're not able to really deal with these adverse events. And we can imagine that if we're losing these individuals from the drug X sample, now the drug X sample is younger, healthier, and has higher health literacy, and therefore is probably healthier overall than, individual, than the study sample of people receiving placebo. And we could imagine how that would induce a selection bias such that you know, patients receiving drug X are now kind of healthier, younger, and are probably more likely to have a better outcome anyway, regardless of whether they get drug X or placebo. Um, so again, I think this question really emphasizes that selection bias can both occur on the front end and the back end. And when it, when it occurs on the back end and it's you know, due to losses to follow up, to always consider the attrition bias as um, a potential culprit. As usual, if you had trouble with this lecture or with this question, I recommend going back and watching the associated lecture. Um, and as usual, please like, comment, subscribe, and good luck.